On today's episode, we are getting into the latest news, including an artificial moon simulator made in China, the first weighted test of the SpaceX Mechazilla, Virgin Orbit making a successful third launch, and NASA's latest plan for the ISS. So let's get going. This is the space race. That's no moon. It's a magnetic box inside a vacuum chamber. Or in other words, it's Chinese scientists latest effort to create an artificial moon environment with lunar like gravity here on Earth. This low gravity simulated environment can be used by the Chinese space agency to prepare equipment for future exploration missions to the moon. Basically, what they've built is a vacuum chamber with a small box inside that is just two square feet in size, but the box is filled with an artificial lunar landscape that is made up of rocks and dust that are similar in composition to moon rocks. The electromagnets are used to generate a powerful magnetic field that levitates the box and its contents. This creates a similar effect to low gravity. The basic concept was taken from a Russian physicist named Andre Game, who famously levitated a frog using an electromagnet in the late 90s. Apparently, Game once got curious on a Friday evening and wanted to see what might happen if he cranked his magnet up to maximum power and then poured water into it. Surprisingly, even to him, the water stopped falling, formed into balls, and floated around. After that, he figured, if I can make water float, then I can probably make a frog float. Game won the IG Nobel Prize in Physics in 2000 for levitating a live frog with magnets, which is a fake prize given to experiments that are both funny and useful at the same time. Years later in 2010, Game would win a real Nobel Prize for the discovery of graphene, which he also made by accident on a Friday night. Graphene is the thinnest, strongest, most conductive material in existence and will probably change the world as we know it once we figure out how to mass manufacture the stuff and build things with it. Weird, but hopefully informative side tangent. Anyways, back to the Chinese levitation box. The first version is super small, but researchers claim it will be big enough for testing certain equipment and tools to see how they react to the moon's low gravity environment, ironing out any kinks before an actual landing. One reason for this is that dust and rocks can behave differently under a low gravity environment than they do under earth gravity conditions. On a prototype of the simulator, scientists tested drill resistance finding it could be much higher on the moon than predicted by computer models. It could also be used to determine whether 3D printing is possible on the lunar surface before expensive and heavy equipment is deployed. The Chinese space agency is already pretty active on the lunar surface right now. We're all probably familiar with their lunar rover that appeared to discover a cube on the moon, but turned out to just be a big rock. There are several more of those Chinese rover missions planned throughout the 2020s, with the eventual goal for China to land astronauts on the moon by 2030. We've been seeing a lot of new activity lately at the SpaceX Starbase launch pad in South Texas recently. The robotic launch tower with rocket catching arms known as Mechazilla has finally entered the testing phase with its first automated movements and most recently has begun stress testing with giant water balloons. The robotic chopstick arms on the Starship launch tower are designed to pick the rocket stages up from transport vehicles and stack them on the tower's orbital launch mount. Then as the booster and ship stages of the rocket come back down from space, the arms will catch them from mid-air and place them back down again. It's an unprecedented kind of machine. No one has ever attempted anything close to this before, but SpaceX are going to go ahead and do it and see what happens. The trick with the Mechazilla is that it needs to be able to maneuver to giant arms very precisely in the pinching chopstick motion and also in the lateral side to side transfer motion. But it also needs to be strong enough to cradle gigantic steel rocket bodies. SpaceX has started very slowly testing and calibrating their monster robot over the past few weeks or so. Starting off with very slow movements of the arm system up and down, open and closed, and side to side. 
Then they had Mechazilla grab and transport a steel structure. And then in their most ambitious test to date, SpaceX clipped two bunches of balloons to the structure being held in the robot arms, which were then filled with water. Later that day, we saw Mechazilla performing more of the up and down and side to side movements with the weighted balloons, which honestly looked pretty funny. It's like a giant robot swinging around two lopsided nutsacks. Anyways, sources at Teslarati estimated that the weight of the giant balloons and water would have been something between 120 and 300 tons. And that makes a lot of sense because we've estimated the dry mass of the Starship to be between 80 and 120 tons, while the Super Heavy will probably weigh 150 to 200 tons. The arms only went up around 20 meters or so and never reached their full height while carrying the weight, but eventually the full weight of the ship stage will have to be lifted all the way to the top of the 140 meter tower to make stacking the rocket possible. Virgin Orbit has successfully completed their third commercial launch with the deployments of mini satellites into low earth orbit on a mission they've named Above the Clouds. On January 13th, the Virgin-owned 747 jet airplane named Cosmic Girl took off from the company's spaceport facility in the Mojave Desert. The plane flew west over the Pacific Ocean where it released the Launcher 1 rocket from under the wing at an altitude of 35,000 feet. In mid-air, Launcher 1 ignites its main engine and propels its payloads the rest of the way into Earth's orbit. The payloads consisted of various research satellites for the Department of Defense, along with three small satellites from companies Sat Revolution and Spire Global. This was the first launch for Virgin Orbit after going public on the New York Stock Exchange through a SPAC merger on January 7th, and this puts Virgin into a very hot new market of small satellite launch companies alongside Firefly, Astra, and Rocket Lab. If you want to learn more about the unique orbital launch system employed by Virgin Orbit, we've got a whole video on the company that you can check out. We'll put a link in the description and maybe even have one on the screen for you right now. The Biden administration has announced their commitment to supporting the International Space Station until the end of this decade, giving commercial aerospace companies more time to develop and bring their own stations online before the ISS is retired. We know that the International Space Station is getting old. It's going on 23 years now since the first module was placed in orbit. Though they have made more modern additions through the life of the station, the most recent module, Nauka, was added in 2021, and before that, the Leonardo in 2011. For a long time, it was believed that the ISS would need to be decommissioned by the year 2020, then it was pushed back to 2024, but now this appears to be a very final deadline for the station. NASA will begin to transition their operations out of the station in 2028 and call it quits in 2030. The NASA statement reads, extending operations through 2030 will continue another productive decade of research advancement and enable a seamless transition of capabilities in low earth orbit to one or more commercially owned and operated destinations in the late 2020s. The decision to extend operations and NASA's recent awards to develop commercial space stations together ensure uninterrupted continuous human presence and capabilities both are critical facets of NASA's International Space Station transition plan. So NASA will be moving their orbital operations over to a privately owned space station in the next decade. That could be the Orbital Reef from Sierra Space and Blue Origin. It could be the NanoRack Star Lab or the Axiom Space Station. Hopefully all three of those ideas and more actually come together over the next decade, but we just have to wait and see. We know that the Chinese are busy constructing their own orbital station, the Tiangong, but we can pretty much guarantee that NASA will never be allowed in that one on the account of the American government banning Chinese astronauts from the ISS. And we also know that Russia had their own plans for a space station. Most likely they will separate their half of the ISS and build that into a new structure centered around the Nauka module. Let us know in the comments section below if you would be interested in seeing long form videos on any of these new space station concepts and which one you would like to see first. There's some really cool stuff to talk about going on there. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. 
Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.